Good morning, everybody. I'd also like to thank the organizers, Dr. Seema Gulia, for inviting me uh, and assigning me this uh, very appropriate topic of histomolecular classification of sarcoma. And just interjected two words, TMH experience, that I do often in my presentations as the theme of the conference is mystique exploring the rare controversial, which includes sarcomas. So we'll just go uh, directly towards, uh, oh, somehow I can't move this slide. Yeah, uh, the, from where the tumors or the mesenchymal tumors emanate in the female genital tract, and you can have the uh, endometrial stromal uh, tissue from where you see one part of the tumors, that is the mesenchymal, including the endometrial stromal sarcomas, where there have been a lot of uh, developments, including the recent WHO classification 2020. And the others is the smooth muscles uh, from where you see the sarcomas emanating. And of course, you have the other uh, mesenchymal tumors, rare tumors, which can occur in the entire female genital tract. And this brings me to the classification that you will see in endometrial stromal sarcomas being stratified in three different genetic actually flavors, uh, low grade, high grade, and undifferentiated. Then you can have a tumor if it has a uh, benign to atypical epithelial component with a mesenchymal tissue, that is uh, adenosarcoma, also called as Mullerian adenosarcoma. And then the malignant counterpart of the smooth muscle, that is a leiomyosarcoma. Of course, in the others, you have uh, rare tumors like Ewing sarcomas that can occur in across the entire female genital tract, uh, proximal type epithelial sarcomas, which have proclivity for sites like uh, perineum and vulva. Uh, you can have malignant counterparts of p -coma, and of course, rarely, uh, MPNST is driven by the histone 3.3 K27ME3. So when I come to the uh, endometrial stromal sarcomas, low grade, that's the entire almost about the uh, tumor. You have uh, actually histologically this tumor resembling the proliferative phase of the endometrial stroma for the pathologists uh, and who've seen the slides of the endometrium some point in time in their life. Uh, and they show infiltrative or permeative growth pattern with or without lymphovascular invasion. They occur predominantly in the uterus and also can occur in the cervix over a wide uh, age range uh, with uh, actually um, average being 52 years. Uh, the risk factors include estrogen intake and tamoxifen, also radiation. Grossly, they appear as uh, intramural, intracavitatory, yellow tan nodules, which are myoinvasive and with intravascular tumor plugs, kind of a resemblance to bag of worms appearance that one sees on imaging. And microscopically, they uh, resemble like the stroma, endometrial stroma uh, tissue, like the oval to short spindle cells permeating through the myometrium in tongue-like projections and uh, um, also associated with lymphovascular emboli, variable or maybe brisk mitosis, which can kind of uh, freak the pathologist towards considering it as high grade. But mitosis now is not the parameter to consider something as low or high grade. And then they can have a smooth muscle differentiation, <clears throat> excuse me, variable hyalinization, cystic change, histiocytes, and maybe sex cord-like components that one can see. Immunohistochemically, these tumors show consistently CD10 expression with the most oftenly ERPR expression, and also they can show cyclin D1, which comes more often in the high-grade types. Uh, coming towards the genetic aspects of this tumor, about two-thirds of the low-grade endometrial stromal sarcomas show this JAS-F1 sus fusion, or the JAS-F1 PHF, and there are a whole range of the other fusions that one can see uh, as a part of these uh, tumors being driven by. They are staged according to the AJCC and the fiber survival is about 90% more than for one and two stage in contrast to 50% for stage three and four. And this is how it looks uh, morphologically. You see a very cellular tumor composed of cells which are like a stroma. You have the oval to short spindle cells trafficking all across. But interestingly, you have a very uh, perivascular arrangement. You see these blood vessels across this, uh, the entire tumor and the tumor cells arrange around them. And then immunostochemically, you can see this diffuse brown staining is uh, CD10 expression, and they show uh, very consistently uh, progesterone receptor expression in most uh, cases. Now, this was a case that uh, was referred to me as an endometrial polyp, and these tumors can come as polypoidal uh, you know, lesions uh, in a youngish female. And you can see on one part, you can see a gland, which is endometrium, and the other is more compact cellular stroma. And you can see CD10 is nicely highlighting the uh, stroma, sparing the gland in the lower, lower uh, image, and you see diffusely PR expression. But what was interesting on the other image, if you see, is a little bit of this glandular or tubular arrangement that one can, you know, for a pathologist routinely can consider this could be epithelial component and uh, think of it as could be a uh, carcinoma and calling it as a, a, a carcinosarcoma or malarian tumor, which actually it is not because it is a sex cord component which was highlighted by sex cord markers like MIG2 
calreutin and an inhibin, and this was actually a endometrial stromal sarcomoid sex cord like elements which can happen in these uh, tumors as part of their spectrum. Now, uh, the high-grade tumors have, uh, understandably, uh, more mitosis. They have round to spinal cell morphology, and they can be associated with also low-grade. So this reflects the heterogeneity one can see as a part of the spectrum of these tumors. Looking at the age range, it's again wide, and uh, since it comes in certain genetic subtypes, you have the B or ITDs, or the internal tandem duplication, which occur in relatively younger patients. Grossly, in contrast to the low grade, you will have these tumors that are more fleshy, uh, large-sized, uh, associated with hemorrhage and necrosis. Microscopically, they appear as uh, expansile, more invasive, more LVIs, increased mitosis, again, a variable appearance in terms of the fibromyxoid appearance. They can have sex cord-like features, pseudoglandular rosettes, which can make one think about as a round cell tumor also, as including Ewing's. Immunohistochemically, they consistently, in most cases, show cyclin D1 diffusely and also show B B core. Uh, they can show secret TLE1 and variable expression of CD10 uh, along with the ERPR, SMA, and Desmin. The latter two are mostly seen in smooth muscle differentiation, the SMA, Desmin, and HCAL Desmond. Now, coming to the most important, interesting part of these tumors is the genetic fusions, and you have these tumors coming in three genetic flavors, if I may say so. You have the YWHAE, not M2A fused fusion positive tumors that are more like round to spindle cells. They show diffusely cyclin D1, B core expression, and show CD10, which is negative, and ERPR also is going to be negative. In contrast, the ZC3H7 B core fusion positive tumors again show cyclin D1 positivity, but they show B core in 50% cases, and they can be CD10 positive. Positive, which you see in low-grade sarcomas, endometrial stromal sarcomas, and ERPR are variably positive. B core ITDs are cyclin D1 positive, B core positive, and they show Desmin positivity, which generally comes in smooth muscle tumors. So it's important to know that cyclin D1 consistently comes positive diffusely in most uh, high-grade endometrial stromal sarcomas, including B core positivity in certain subtypes. And that's an example. You can see again a more cellular tumor, which is spindle, and maybe you see some round cells, but there were more mitosis. Uh, you know. Uh, it showed CD10, which is more uh, patchy in contrast to the low grade where you could see more diffuse, and what it showed was cyclin D1 diffusely positive. So that's like a uh, marker that shifts towards possibility of you're seeing something high grade, and that's what we do further. We triage such cases for the YWHA gene rearrangement, and you can see the split signals. <clears throat> The red-green split signals indicate that there is a rearrangement or the split, uh, which is seen on higher magnification of this individual tumor cell. You can see the red-green split signals in a single fused. If it's dual fusion, you call it YWHA negative. And that's uh, what you see in this case, which uh, when record a couple of months uh, showed again this uh, same morphology, more uh, cellular, more spindly, and you see diffuse cyclin D1 expression in this case. And this brings me to sharing our experience on the YWHA rearranged tumors, which was published in IJC by our resident, Dr. Anuj, under the guidance of Dr. Menon, and I contributed a couple of cases. And we saw about uh, 24 tumors in which uh, 16 were tested and two were positive, including the one case that I showed with you, showed you. And this uh, stems from this publication, which mentions about cyclin D1 as a good marker in especially cases of YWHA rearranged uh, high-grade endometrial stromal sarcomas. And that's another uh, one of the first cases I came across. And you can see more banal or maybe low gradish morphology. And you see this wire-like collagen around the blood vessels. But you see on the other side, more cellular aspect towards this tumor which again uh, immunohistochemically shows cyclin D1 diffuse expression and patchy CD10, which you will see mostly in low-grade sarcoma. So you can see this uh, tumor showing this low to high-grade transition. And despite lower mitosis, in view of the diffuse cyclin D1 positivity in P16, which can also come in these tumors, this is a uh, endometrial stromal sarcoma, uh, possibly high-grade. And this was the first publication from our country that I wrote in the IJPMR National Journal. And that's another interesting case I came across in the pelvic location. You can see this very, very cellular tumor. You see, apart from spindle, now more round morphology with these mitosis in these marks that I have made. And you can see certain areas of necrosis in the fourth image, which again tells that you're dealing with something high grade. And the differentials in the context will be synovial sarcoma, lyos, sarcomatoid carcinomas, stromal sarcomas, and also SFT. And they can have different treatment-related implications uh, if we have to uh, individualize uh, the diagnosis, which should 
should be done in a case like this, and that's what we did. You see CD10 is completely negative, but what you see is patchy cyclin D1 expression that might not be enough to call something as uh, YWHA rearranged. Uh, so we step ahead with another marker called BCOR, and you can see this is diffusely positive, reinforcing a diagnosis of, again, a hybrid endometrial stromal sarcoma with BCOR positivity. And here you can see that all the signals are fused for the YWHA that we triaged, such cases of suspect high-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma. So this is a high-grade type which is b core driven rather than the YWHA rearranged tumor. And this patient was planned for uh, adramycin-based chemotherapy that happens in these tumors. And this again a, is a reference towards uh, utilizing b core as a good robust immunistic chemical marker for the underlying b core rearranged tumors, including the b core ITD, which show consistently positivity, and 50% of the cases of the other ZC3 H7 b core, which will show uh, b core expression apart from cyclin D1, which happens in these tumors. And that's another example. You can see more sort of pseudo glandular appearance if you see in this area with this myxoid change, necrosis, and more uh, round to spindle cell morphology. And one would think perhaps this could again be one of those synovial sarcomas and any high grade sarcomas. And this was B core positive, YWHA not rearranged tumor. So this is again a high grade stromal sarcoma which is B core rearranged. In contrast, towards you see more pink tumor with this abundant cytoplasm in the individual tumor cells, which are spindle to epithelioid and the mitotic figures along with necrosis, you can see this N here. So this is a high-grade sarcoma, and the first possibility, if you see in the female genital tract, is we'll throw in the smooth muscle markers, and this was positive for H. caldas one in SMA. This is a lyomyosarcoma, epithelioid type. <clears throat> So this tumor, uh, in, case, in this case, the patient underwent a THBSO and further was a triage for gemcitabine docetaxel plus EB EBRT, which lyomyosarcomas sarcomas in context of, you know, the uh, high stage recurrent uh, scenarios are uh, uh, triaged accordingly. In contrast to the stromal sarcomas that have their uh, specific fusions, lyomyosarcomas sarcomas are associated with more complex chromosomal aberrations, including mutations in the TP53 atrex or MED12. So coming towards adenosarcomas or the mullerian adenosarcomas, here you will see a uh, malignant mesenchymal component with this benign to atypical epithelial component. That's what we call as mullerian or uh, adenosarcomas because you have the benign or atypical. If it is a malignant epithelial, it goes out of the basket of the, uh, the mesenchymal tumors. There are carcinosarcomas. We don't use the word mullerian anymore. So these are, those are uh, included in the category of the carcinomas. Adenosarcomas are in the category of the mesenchymal tumors. And that's what's the impression, you know, you see lower magnification for histopathology, a very leaf-like appearance, what we call. And we see this similar appearance in phylloidous tumor of the breast, if the breast pathologist, you know, can relate to what we are seeing here, a very frond-like, leaf-like appearance. And you see this very glandular condensation of the cells. You see the cells trafficking all across these irregular-shaped, dilated, variably glands, myometrial infiltration. <clears throat> And then at times you can see this uh, heterologous components including the chondroid or cartilaginous or the rhabdomyoblastic differentiation. Now if there's a more uh, stromal overgrowth with more mitosis, more than 10 per 10 high power field, those will be the sarcomatous overgrowth. Those are more uh, high grade adenosarcomas and they can show this uh, rhabdomyoblastic differentiation which is reinforced with desmin positivity and maybe myo-D1 or myogenin. ER is highlighting the benign endometrial glands and of course you can see SMA highlighting the smooth muscle. So again, sharing with you our experience of these 19 adenosarcomas that we came across and was presented on this stage in 2011. And we had the cases which were high grade triaged further for the adjuvant treatment that happens in high grade adenosarcomas. Brings me to this interesting case of an ovarian tumor, which is morphologically a round cell tumor. And the differentials one would consider will be a sex cord tumor or a small cell carcinoma. And again, one of the round cell tumors, which was MIG2 positive. And then we triage a case like this for uh, genetics, that is the EWS fly one, because you're suspecting Ewing sarcoma based on MIG2 positive, and this is what it was. EWS are rearranged Ewing sarcoma. Another case of that we published Ewing sarcoma in the vagina. And that was more like a success story of a Ewing sarcoma occurring in a youngish female with a simultaneous lung meds, which is seen with this FDG uh, PET image and post-induction EFT 2001 protocol that is offered for cases of Ewing sarcoma. At our institution, you can see these lesions were gone and the patient has a survival benefit of 12 months. Brings me to sharing with you our experience of the five uh, Ewing sarcomas that were highlighted also as citation in the recent WHO fascicle. Uh, we've seen these tumors across the female genital tract, including sites like uh, vulva, cervix, vagina, endometrium, coarse ovary that I mentioned. Coming towards more epithelioid appearance that you see in a case like this, and differentials will 
consider will be carcinomas and maybe melanomas for a pathologist because you see this very prominent nuclei in individual tumor cells which are more like rhabdoid appearance what we call with this abundant cytoplasm this pink intracytoplasmic inclusions of course these are positive for epithelial markers so one would stop considering this as a carcinoma but if you know the site is vulva one needs to be sure that you're not missing out on this marker called smart b1 wherein you see a loss of the expression of this uh, marker in the individual tumor cells and what you see brown spots are actually the endothelial cells. So this is a proximal type epithelial sarcoma occurring in the uh, vulvar location. And that was uh, on the resection. You can see this 2.5 centimeter size tumor, just showing this a uh, very epithelioid appearance. And that's the experience I will share with you are uh, with uh, Dr. Biswajit and Dr. Shaila. And we published this series of four cases, mostly dealt with uh, the surgical resection. And now there's a uh, option of tazimatostat because EZH2 inhibitors, uh, you know, because these are INI1 deficient tumors. So those can be offered to cases which are recurrent large sized. And that's the final slide of a case I will share with you, which can look very sarcoma because they are very cellular and uh, you see CD34 positivity. But of course, we have now a magic marker to unravel this tumor called STAT6. And this is a solitary fibrous tumor, which actually looks like a synovial sarcoma. It's completely a game changer because this marker uh, drives, you know, is a reflection of the underlying genetics of the NAV2 STAT6 fusion, which happens in these tumors. So finally, to wrap up my talk, endovital stromal sarcomas are low and high grade. And if we don't, can't stratify based on the molecular features we call something as undifferentiated. Adenosarcomas show or display a wide histomorphological spectrum. Ewing sarcomas can occur across the entire female genital tract. It's important to reinforce this diagnosis with the EWSR rearrangement by fish that we can utilize. Proximal type epithelial sarcomas occur in vulvar and perineal locations and they are INI1 deficient. And we can see rare cases of SFT that we've seen in the female genital tract, which can look like synovial sarcomas and STAT6 is a useful marker. I didn't touch upon the malignant picomas in the interest of time, but we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much.